As you probably know, life is not linear. So welcome to part two in SVM. And today we're going to talk about situations in which life is not that simple that we can draw a single line and separate the world in above and below. So if you haven't seen part one, stop the video and go there. And we want to discuss in this video situations like this, in which you have different levels and it's impossible to draw a line and separate this problem. So let me show you this with an example. Imagine that we have in an oncology department, so we have some chemotherapy patients, and basically we know that if the dose of the chemotherapy is low, then it's not going to be effective, but if we, there is a high toxicity, so if the levels of these chemicals, if these drugs are too high, then the patient can also die. So we have a region, an optimal region in which the patient lives, and a, region, a couple of regions that are not connected in which the patient dies. So of course we cannot draw any line, so if I draw a line here, I'm going to misclassify all these points, if I draw the separation here, then despite the margin is large enough, I'm going to misclassify all these points. So this is a really non-linear separable situation. So what can we do? So here is the magic. Imagine that instead of dealing just with the variable x, I create a new variable, and this is absolutely made up, and the variable is x squared. I'm, going, I'm ranging this parameter from 0 to 1. So 1 squared is 1, and 0 squared is 0. So basically all the points are going to be in this square. So let's do some mathematics. Let's take this point. Let's square this one and then here, the zero here. And then let's do the same with all the points. So this point will shift there. This square is going to be this point and this point square is going to be that point. And repeat this for all the problems. So basically now what we have is a two dimensional data set instead of the one dimensional one. And you can be thinking, okay, this is not very smart because in the old days we have just one predictor and now we have two predictors. But here is where magic comes in. Now, as you can see here, I, I can draw this simple line. So, and this line is separating the world again in above and below. So basically I have converted a non separable problem in 1D into a separable problem in 2D. So now I have this hyperplane and actually in this very simple situation, I'm using maximum margin classifier because all the points are perfectly classifier. So now life is beautiful again because I have this uh, red area in which everything works fine and this green area in which everything works fine. And now I have this margin and this is a two-dimensional margin. So I have created an unseparable problem in 1D to a separable problem in 2D. Of course, if I now have some problems with some data points that even with this trick are not working perfectly well, I can still use this idea of cross-validation, so I can allow for C misclassified data points. And in that case, when we are first transforming the data and then applying support vector classifiers, this is called generically support vector machines. So in summary, we have translated a one non-separable problem in 2D into a separable problem in two dimensions. We have applied this transformation to the X, to X square, and this is one particular type of SVM called the quadratic kernel. Okay, you can imagine that you can do this in several dimensions. So imagine that instead of having a line, I have this situation, and then you can go to this video, this animation made by some other guy. And basically you can see here that transforming this data in 2D into a 3D, I can also find this hyperplane, this purple hyperplane, that is classifying perfectly the purples and the blues. So you can uh, imagine that you can do this in any dimension. So mathematically, we, we kind of skip this idea, but in, in the linear classifier, basically we were trying to decide what is the hyperplane separating, even with some misclassified, separating the world into up and down. Now what we are basically doing here is adding some predictors, some quadratic pred predictors, but the idea is basically the same. But forget about these boxes. So basically, the, the idea of the quadratic kernel is that instead of using this function, which basically you are using a dot product, which is basically a linear manipulation of the new data according to the old data, we are doing some quadratic kernel in which we're transforming first the data according to this uh, quadratic multiplication, and then we are using this function to say if the new x is in the blue or is in the purple. The name quadratic comes from from these two that we are applying here. And then a ker name kernel comes from mathematics and basically has to do with the idea that we are not using a cross product here, but a dot product here, but we are using a, some weird transformation of the points. There are many flavors. So the basic is uh, support vector classifier is the linear kernel. We have seen the quadratic kernel, which is a particular type of a more general one in which we can change the dimension of the transformation. And this is called the polynomial kernel. 
and we have another type of problem in which they are called radial kernel which basically we are creating islands of data su surrounded by different points you can use cross-validation to get a good value for D of course so you don't have to be a mastermind in order to decide which is the best choice for the D you have some example here so this is our good old data set that we are using in all of the videos and basically we have the blues so, sorry the reds are more or less here and the blues should be here so if I use a linear kernel then the situation it doesn't work very well because I have a lot of false negatives and a lot of false positives so I can use this idea of radial SVM so I can have a more flexible line you can see here that if I use a polynomial or a radial kernel then the area under the curve is pretty high and the linear is performing really poorly and the reason why the performance is so low is because life cannot be separated linearly as, as you can see here you can have all the metrics like the kappa and accuracy and I'm going to show you how to do these plots in another video but basically you can see here that if the problem is not linearly separable then a linear kernel is not going to work and you have to do more fancy stuff hopefully you're thinking now okay this looks like logistic regression right in which we were trying to draw a line and separate the world between up and down and the answer is yes and no so yes because we're using a straight lines at least with a linear kernel and no because SVM is based on geometrical properties so if you remember we are trying to clear the space between categories so we want the margin as high as possible because we want a lot of empty space between both groups a logistic regression is based on the statistical properties of the features so basically the mean the variance the standard deviation of of those properties another difference is that SVM works amazingly well when you have unstructured data like text images and sound files a logistic regression works well when we have features that are basically you know, follow a kind of normal distribution there are some rules of thumb if you want to apply one of each methods so if we call n the number of features and m the number of training examples so you have here here some criterion in order to to know when you apply, when you need to apply svm and when you need to apply uh, logistic regression so in summary what are the good stuff about svm so why svm is so popular these days so one one good reason is that it works well when you have a clear margin so for instance if you try to distinguish images in which you have dogs and cats and, and then in that case this is going to work pretty well it's effective in high dimensions again going back to sound files or images you have a lot of information so you have color you have the, the brightness of the picture so you have some features in the picture like i don't know cats have uh, the ears which are kind of like triangles and the dogs not and things like that and in that case svm is going to work really well it's less prone to overfitting and in cases in which the number of dimensions is greater than the number of samples is probably the best algorithm out there on the con side that it does not perform very good for large data set and this is related to number four point number four and kernels can be computationally very expensive so you have to do a lot of computations in in your code and this is going to take a long time to train on the other hand despite the fact that it's very less prone to overfitting is very vulnerable to noise in the vicinity of the boundary so you have points in near the margin which are very close together then the boundary is going to move dramatically from one side to the other and one thing that i don't like about svm is that they don't uh, th those algorithms don't provide probability estimates and I, I you know that i love probabilities because sometimes life is not a matter of yes and no it's a matter of probability of yes and probability of no so if you're working in fields like insurance or health for instance you have to define risk and risk is a matter of probability